hello friends and viewers good day today i have a a famous novel in my hand a great travel account the name of which is gulliver's travel by jonathan swift and this is a novel which is divided into four uh, travels that is the narrative of the travels by J so gulliver's travel is the name of this novel it is a, a four part satirical work by an anglo irish uh, author jonathan swift published anonymously in 1726 as travel so a keystone of english literature it is one of the book that contribute to the emergence of the novel a parody of then popular travel narrative gulliver's travel combined adventure with savage satire mocking english custom and politics of the day so this novel is divided to four travels let me tell you the a voyage to lilliput the first voyage a second voyage is a voyage to brobdingnag and the third voyage is a voyage to laputa and a voyage to the country of hunaims so the story begins here gulliver travel is the first person narrative that is told from the point of view of lanuel gulliver a hero of protagonist of this novel a surgeon and a sea captain who visit remote regions of the world and it describes four adventure in the first one gulliver is the only survival of shipwreck and he swims to lilliput where he is tied up uh, by the people who are less than 6 inches 15 cm tall he is then taken to the capital city and eventually released the lilliputian small size mirror their small mindedness they indulge in ridiculous custom and petty debates for example political affiliation they have for example they are divided between a uh, man who wear high heel shoes symbols of the english tories and those who wear low heels representing the english uh, wigs the court position are filled by those who are best at rope dancing Gulliver is asked to help defend Lilliput against the empire of Blefusco in which Lilliput is at war over which end of uh, uh of an edge uh, these are uh, the the uh, to help them at war at the end of an egg, how the edge should be broken this being a matter of religious doctrine for them Gulliver captures Blefusco naval fleet thus preventing an invasion uh, <clears throat> but declines to assist the emperor of Lilliput in conquering Blefusco later Gulliver's extinguishes a fire in royal palace by urinating on it eventually he falls out of favor and is sentenced to be blinded and starved He flees to Blefusco where he finds a normal sized boat and is thus able to return to England. The second travel is Gulliver's second voyage takes him to Brobdingnag inhabited by a race of giant people. Here he find a giant people very big when a farmer work finds Gulliver and delivers him to the farm owner. The farmer begins exhibiting Gulliver for money and the farmer's young daughter Gloom Gloom Dal Clitch takes care of him. One day the queen orders the farmer to bring Gulliver to her and she purchases Gulliver. He becomes a favorite at court though the king reacts with the contempt when uh, Gulliver recounts the splendid achievement of his own civilization. He started to debate with the king of that. The king respond to Gulliver's description of government and history of England by concluding that the English must be a race of odious vermin. Government and history of England by concluding that uh, Gulliver's uh, offers to make gunpowder and cannon for them. 
but the king is horrified by the thought of such weaponry. Eventually, Gulliver is picked up by an eagle and then rescued at sea by people of his own side. On the Gulliver's third voyage, he said, adrift by pirates and eventually ends up on flying island of Laputa. The people of Laputa all have one eye pointing inward and other upward. They are so lost in thought uh, that they must be reminded to pay attention to the world around them. Though they are greatly concerned with the mathematics and with music, they have no practical application for their learning. Laputa is the home of King of Balni Barbi, the continent below it. Gulliver is permitted to leave the island to visit Lagado, the capital city of Barni Barbi. He finds the farm fields in Rune and the people living in apparent squalor. Gulliver host explained that the inhabitants follow the prescription of Learn Academy of the city, where the scientist undertakes such wholly impractical project as extracting sunbeam from uh, uh, cucumber. Later, Gulliver visit Gulubinder, the island of sorcerers, and uh, there he speak with great men of the past and learns from them the lies of history, the kingdom of Lugnak. He meets the Strulberg who are immortal but age as though they were mortal and thus miserable. Now we come to the fourth part of his uh, Gulliver's visit, the land of Honayams, a race of intelligent horses who are cleaner and more rational, communal and benevolent. They have most tellingly no words for the deception or evil. Then the brutish, filthy, greedy and degenerate humanite race called Yahoo's, some of whom they have tamed an ironic twist on human beast relationship. The Honayums are very curious about Gulliver, who seems to be both Yahoo and civilized. But after Gulliver describes his country and his history uh, to the master Honayam, the Honayam conclude that the people of England are not more reasonable than the Yahoos. At last, it is decided that the Gulliver must leave the Honayams. Uh, Gulliver then returns to England back, so disgusted with humanity that he avoids his family and buys horses and converse with them instead. So the analyzes, let's analyze, consider swift masterpiece, Gulliver's travel, the most brilliant as the most bitter and controversial of his satires, written in the matter of fact style, an air of sober reality, the work uh, defeats over simple explanation. It is essentially comic or it is a manthropic depiction of humankind. Swift certainly seems to use the various racist societies Gulliver's encounter in his travel to satirize many of the error, follies and frailties that human beings are prone to. The warlike disputation, but essentially trivial Lilliputian in the first section and the deranged impractical pedants and intellectual in the third segment are shown as imbalance between lacking common sense and even decency. The Honayams, by contrast, are the epitome of reason and virtuous simplicity, however, Gulliver's own proud identification, this horse is of circuit gain for his fellow human being, indicates that he became imbalanced, that human beings are simply incapable of aspiring to virtuous relationship. So Gulliver's travels, uh, this is an allegory as well as satiric touch. So ladies and gentlemen, the Gulliver's travel, this is a satire and allegory. And Jonathan Swift had satired the days and the politics of his, uh, the days of his own days. I, I will, I'm sure that you will find this book very interesting. And the Jonathan Swift, the very best book in uh, literature. Thank you very much.